Good morning guys and welcome back to the A-Frame. I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this and I apologize we just had to get all our materials and our ducks in a row to get this thing all started. So we've got some plywood and uh, we're gonna build our little knee walls. It's pretty much overwhelming in the comments that said build a knee wall otherwise I guess we're not gonna have very much usable space in this thing. So our plan today is to take the A-Frame that we've already built off and then build a strong knee wall. And there's some problems we're gonna run into that I know of is, is, is basically the, the, the roof is going to push the walls out. So we're gonna probably do some tie backs, some, something like that in order, to, in order to get everything secure and uh, solid so that doesn't happen. Don's here. There he is, there's, there's the, the infamous, the famous, the infamous, the famous Don. Anyways, let's get started, let's get this thing taken apart. We'll get them off the, off the pad and then go from there. Actually, we should measure first, but uh, yeah, let's get started. What I've decided to do is do a 39 inch knee wall, actually 39 and a half. And that will allow me to incorporate the bottom part of this guy to give me a little bit more structural integrity on the wall. So 39 inches above that, and then this is about eight and a half. So that'll give me, that'll give me 39 and a half, that'll give me 48. So 48 inch tall knee wall from the bottom of this thing all the way to the top. And then my A-frame sits on top of that. So it'll be a modified A-frame, won't be exactly an A-frame. Anyways, just to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Zenger Superbase. We'll get to more on that later, but first let's frame up some knee walls. Just like that, we got an e-wall. So this stuff I ended up uh, saving old scrap skid wood. So it's two by four skid wood. You can see kind of it's got the groove cut in it. And that was, uh, I think they were transporting like pole logs or like utility poles. And they put the strap between that thing to hold it on. So that's what those are. So they're not exactly the perfect two by four, but for the price, you just can't beat it. So, and they're all short, they're all under four feet long. So what, we're, what we've done is we've actually cut um, all, all of the pieces at 35 inches because we're going to have a single bottom plate and then a double top plate. Don's just marking them out there now. So we cut them all up and then we install them all. Easy like that, stick frame. So the plan next, once we get the A-frame up is to actually stick frame the top and then add some more structure to go from the point to the other, to the top. And, and the reason why you do that is because you don't really want a hinge point in the middle of the wall, which it's kind of what we're sort of leaning towards, but there's going to be some steel in between the knee wall and the upper portion of the wall, so it won't have a hinge point. To... But that being said, the A-frame itself is sort of going to support all the weight anyway. So we want a solid back knee wall. And the front, I've got to actually take into consideration the door, so I'm going to do some figuring for that. Get our knee walls up on the front because uh, I don't want it to cut it out afterwards. I find the easiest way to frame a wall is to take your top and bottom plate, measure and cut them to size, and then take your tape measure and run along the top and bottom plate, measure your 16 inches on center, mark those out with your speed square, and then cut all your studs the exact same length and insert them into the wall. Either screw them together or nail them together, and then all you have to do is stand your wall up and you have yourself a wall. And just like that, we've got an E-wall. We just gotta put a little bit more wood on top. We're gonna do a double top plate in order to lock in the corners because otherwise they might pull apart. Right now there's only, um, it's only locked in just right at the very end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lap them over and then that'll lock the corners in. And then when we do our plywood, we're gonna lap them over again, further increasing our strength in our walls. Because the last thing we want to do is go bling. So that's what we're gonna do. Is that a strong corner done? It will be. It will be. It will be. Not yet, it's wiggly. It's a wiggly corner right now. Once we get our plywood on there, Everything attached should be strong, strong like bull. Normally when you'd be building an A-frame cabin, you would either use steel roofing or shingle materials and, and that would be your, your roofing structure. But since I have all these panels, I kind of had to design the cabin around them. So I made sure it was the same length and the same height as the panels that I had because I don't have any extras and uh, they have to be pretty precise because it is a, a glass an aluminum frame. There's no real wiggle room when you're dealing with that sort of thing. Using these glass panels possibly saved me thousands of dollars in material because I don't have to worry about the actual cladding on the roof. So I don't have to spend any money on shingles. I don't have to spend my money on steel roof. So it's a great solution and it keeps stuff out of the landfill after all. 
Well, that didn't take very long. We've got our knee wall up. Took about a half a day. Not bad. So as you can see, we're up about 40 inches, which is slightly above countertop height if you're uh, if you're talking about kitchens wise. And I think once once we got that, once we got up to this height, we put our A-frame above us, it'll give us a lot more usable space. I think I'll be able to be about here before my head touches the ceiling. I think. We haven't quite got to that yet. What do you think, Don? You're looking forward to lifting those things up? Absolutely. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. You want to do it tonight? Come yeah. on. We'll just throw them up. No problem. Just, you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> They're going to be heavy. The, the front one is especially heavy. Uh, the, the back three. So should we do the really heavy one first or should we do the heavy one last? Probably last. Because or maybe second or third. Yeah, I think just second. Once we get a technique. Yeah, right? I think second is the ideal one because you're not quite sore yet and you've learned from the first light one. So the second one we're going to put up on the front because it's going to have, it's heavy, 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 heavy. This camera's heavy. That was a lot of work, but I think it's, uh, I think it, it's, it's, it's going to be more functional and uh, we've got some big plans for the front of it and uh, well, the sides and stuff like that. We're going to make this thing look, look like a million bucks. It's actually made of plywood. So it actually is not far off of a million dollars. Um, price of plywood's insane, but it's actually similar price to OSB now. So we got to, we got to rest up. We got to eat our Wheaties tomorrow morning in order to uh, have energy to lift those things up because that's going to be something interesting so stay tuned it's coming actually right now just like that it's the next day it's the erection day don are you excited for erection day always always it's always good when you get to erect something very very large especially on top of something well we did this before and it worked out okay because we just had to erect it on the platform but now we're erecting it on the knee wall, which is about 40 inches tall, which is going to be precarious to say the least, but we've had a night to think about it. We slept on it, we've developed a plan, and I think what our plan is going to be is we're going to put the really, really heavy one up first. We're gonna put blocks at the end of the wall here and over here, and then we're gonna set the A in the little basket, and then we're gonna walk it up while we're in the little basket, walk it up, and then we're gonna secure it while it's standing up there. But we're gonna do the big one first. Bigger go home. But, and if you can see the grade, it kind of slopes, it gets higher at the front, slower at the back. So once we get to the back, we'll be able to actually tackle it from both sides. That's my plan right now anyways. Sound like a good plan, Don? It's the only one so far. It's the only one so far. So it's so plan A. Fast. It's plan A for the A-frame, right? That's right? We don't have plan B, no plan B on this project. Well, we'll go to plan B if it doesn't work for plan A. Oh, I'm sore already. This video is sponsored by Zenger's Super Bass Pro. This power pack here is built like a little workhorse, kind of like a tank. The great thing about this pack is you can power anything you can imagine. Powering my compressor, I've been powering my nail gun, I've been charging my cordless tools, I've been running the grinder, three horsepower drill auger bit, and this thing has been performed amazing. What I like about this pack is that you can power up to six devices simultaneously. You have everything plugged in you could possibly need. It's got USB imports on the front. So if you're charging your phone or if you're charging your tablet, there are a couple ways to charge the Zenjira Super Bass Pro. You can either charge it by solar. They have solar panels that you can purchase and attach to this thing, or you can plug it into your regular outlet in your house. The good thing about it is you can charge it up and it's ready for anything if you have a power outage in your home or emergency situation you can easily power your refrigerator or any other high drain devices you can imagine like a, like a microwave or a um i don't know hot plate something like that but uh it's good for emergency as well as off-grid situations it's got a nice little handle here you can carry it or the back of it it's got a handle that you can extend and then you can wheel it around if you guys are interested in the super base pro the link will be in the description below and currently there's an early bit of pricing of 9.99 Let's let's set, let's just flop it over. <laughs> uh, there. Whoa. Uh -oh. Let's go your way just a second. And then let's go up. I'm gonna just I'm just push it right up. I'm gonna sit yours up there. Tip the whole thing up. Yep. Like this? Yeah. Yep. Like, take it at the end here. Oh, okay. I 
think you got two. There we go. Okay. Actually, you know what? That's good. You want me to come in? Uh, not yet. Uh, can you can you just lift up the top there? Like just push, yeah, push that. Plan B on the A-frame is the uh, sticks we're going to use to push up the top because I realized that we're going to run on a ladder before we run out of A-frame. So we're going to attach the 2x4s to the top and then use that as a lever and push it up. I don't know if it's a lever, but more of a pusher. We're going to use it as a pusher stick. Well, that's tall. <laughs> uh, I might have over underestimated the height of this thing. Overestimated the height. I don't know. It's tall. That's tall. Look at how tall that is. Whew. Chapel's almost done. Three more to go. That was a heavy one. So we should be right on par with the, uh, the light. Light one should be. That should be a cakewalk, Don. The light one should be just a cakewalk. That's cool. It's cr crazy tall. How hard can it be? Just three more times. Quarter done. We're quarter done. It's about right there. Too far. Go this way? Too far? You know. Okay, come back. Come up. Three up, one to go. But this one has a unique problem is that we've got nothing to stand it up on. So we're going to do it completely different than the other three. My plan is to stand up the one leg completely where it's going to go, and then we will both lift the other leg up and I think I think it'll work what do you think Don you think so? I think so you think that's a good plan it's as good as any we have right now so that's right just get her done get her up there we got all sorts of different problems once we got everything up because this thing is really tall maybe taller than I thought it was going to be so let's get this up and move on to the next problem only solutions here only solutions I acquired these garage door panels from a buddy of mine. He is a garage door installer and he had a job where he was replacing five garage doors on an old fire hall that uh, I guess was upgrading their glass. And uh, my original plan for these glass panels were to actually make a greenhouse for with them. But instead I, uh, I determined, well, they have the UV tint on them, which protect, like, keeps out all the UV. So I can't I couldn't in good faith use them for a greenhouse because it wouldn't allow my plants to grow. So instead, what I've done is I've I, I thought of a plan to use them for my A-frame. Normally these, these, these glass panels would be stacked on top of each other like a garage door. So they, they're kind of like a tongue and groove system, which one panel sits on top of the other panel and they create a watertight seal. Where I'm using them here is I'm not actually going to have them kind of up and down, like perfectly up and down. So what I'm gonna do in order to combat the leaky issue is to silicone the joints between each panel. Now that we have the first panel up, I'm gonna secure it to the actual frame of the, the building with these. These are Simpsons strong tie structural screws. They got a little hex head on them and there happens to be a hole directly through the panel already. I'm not sure what that was for, but I'm gonna use it to secure right through the panel and then I'll put some silicone on the screw to prevent it from leaking in the future.
You the inspector? Are the inspector coming? Yeah. Batman. Nah, 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 nah. You got my bat Batman collar on. Oh. I figure it's already here. I might as well use it. There's a stiffener on the door. And I drilled four holes in it and I added lag screws to the bottom to support my first panel. And then every subsequent panel won't need as much support because it'll rest on the bottom panel. These glass panels are extremely heavy. They got to weigh about 150 pounds a piece. In order to get them up, what we did was we brought them to the base of the ladder and then slowly shimmied them up one side at a time, Don on one side, me on the other, until we got them into place. And then we locked them in together with structural screws and silicone at the joint. My figuring on this joint is if I hold them apart and inject silicone, it's polyurethane caulking, inside the crack and then I squish both panels together, that impregnates the uh, polyurethane caulking inside the crack, preventing it from leaking forever. It's the same stuff they put eave trough together, or they should use to put eave trough together, and that usually lasts, well, I think it's 25 year, 50 year caulking, so that's that's the plan there. Uh, and I'm not certain these windows aren't going to leak, but if they do, I'm going to go around each and every pane with the exact same stuff to seal it up nice and tight. Working off the existing panel, we were able to actually add the additional panel on top, and then we drilled two screws in the middle braces in order to attach more screws, and then we screw directly through the panel on either end with uh, structural screws in order to hold them in place. And then once we get, get, up, to, once we get up to the top, we're going to add a big old ridge cap to kind of finish it off. It's actually going better than I thought it was going. As you can see, it's, it's looking like something. We just got a couple more things on this uh, on this one side to do, and then we can move on to the following side, and then we'll get the whole. We're hoping to get all the glass up today, and possibly work on the back wall. What do you think, Don? I think this is going to go smoothly. Let's hope. So far, so good. So far, so good. Let's hope the uh, next two goes. I find if you if you if you treat it like like sort of like a turtle race, right? You, kind of slow and steady. I think if you kind of rush it, you run into problems really fast. But if you go slow and think it out, you kind of foresee the problems before you got a panel kind of half up in the sky and you don't know what to do because it's going to break or something like that. So slow and steady. I think that's why you see those guys on those big construction sites always standing around. Giving you guys a little bit of a pond update. Uh, well, as you can see, it's filled up to almost its original level, which I think it's uh, partially due to the groundwater and uh, the springs that are below it, and also partial due to the rain, which, uh, yeah. So anyways, it's, it's almost up there. My brother and I, the other day, we uh, actually paddled out to the middle of it and we had our little dipstick and we checked it out and uh, near the bottom, it's about eight feet deep. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. We're gonna, we're gonna take that information, we're gonna send it out to our guys over at Linden uh, Fish Hatchery, and uh, they're gonna do some calculations and determine how many fish we can actually put in here safely and comfortably for the fish. So I think between 30 to 50 fish we can probably have in here. I think they have some uh, very hardy trout. And we, we had a couple of trout in here before with the, with the other pond, and it was about four or five feet deep. And uh, they, they survived until my brother actually caught them. So it's good to have them here because if uh, you ever need a fish fry or something, you just go to the pond, you fish yourself out of fish. You can have a shore, shore lunch and uh, away you go. And what's really cool about it is the, the footprint of the, of the pond it actually allows it to be kind of like a better hockey rink in the wintertime. So we got that to look forward to once this thing freezes over. And uh, as soon as ice is out, we're going to put some fish in this guy. It's about coffee time. Got my little Coleman stove. Got my little, this isn't a coffee maker, it's espresso. Pizzetti is the, make, the company that makes these things. People have been asking. No affiliation, no sponsor. They're just, a, it's just kind of a neat little thing. I've cooked it on the induction range and I've cooked it uh, on a fire and now I'm gonna cook it if I could get my coffee out. I pre-packed it, now I gotta get the thing out so I can put water in it. Sausage fingers. Take that, and you put it in there, and you take this, and you screw it on top. And when all the water boils out of this part, comes out of this part, 
you got espresso. It's like Cool Tool lunchtime edition. We're just having lunch and Husk sent me a really cool knife. This is a premium control knife. I'm not sure what that means, but I think it has something to do with the fact that it's got a hole in the middle of it. You can hold your hand and this thing is razor sharp. It's like, try not to cut my hand. Look at that. It's like a, it's like a machete for, for vegetables and fruit. Let's see if I can do that again without cutting my hand off. All right. Sharp, very sharp. Where'd my apple go? So anyways, this little guy here is a premium kitchen knife. The link will be in the description below if you guys want to take a look at one of these guys. Anyways, they're on sale, half off right now. If you want to check one out. I'm not sure exactly the price, but the link will be in the description. Check them out. Look how, look how sharp that is. I'm wasting most of my apple demonstrating how sharp this is. I'm going to cut the dirt off. There. Got my knife. Got my apple. Got my sandwich. We're going to have lunch. Hey, Don, why don't you like daytime coffee? Uh, it's not that I don't like daytime coffee. It's um, usually it's more uh, a weather thing or a seasonal thing. So it's big. daytime coffee is better in the winter. Well, fall and winter. Yeah. Late spring or early spring, I guess. Cool. But uh, yeah, not uh, not uh, not a hard and fast rule. So I just noticed we've got a little bit of the lag bolt ends coming out of the top and I don't want them to get in the road of the panel. So what we're going to do is we got our, our Zenger pack with our angle grinder. We're just going to zip those things off. There's a couple little bits off of two of them. So grind those guys off so they're not in the road. Then we can carry on with the last panel. Is the last panel lighter, Don? No. You're just left on the ladder. Careful, because it should go backwards, right? Well, I'm sitting at the top of the A-frame. This is possibly the most uncomfortable spot to sit there is. As you can see, kind of, I'm right at the top. The Bottom to the top of this thing is roughly 13 foot 4 inches. Right at the top. And that's from the floor all the way to the top and then we're a couple feet up above. But it's a pretty cool view up here. It feels like I'm a bird I'm up in the trees. You got down, down below. He's down there. So the plan with the ridge cap is I'm going to have something custom made to fit from one panel to the other side. Uh, and the reason because we're doing that is because we need a place for our chimney to go and uh, this allows us to give us kind of a space between the two glass panels because we can't we're not going to take a panel out in order to put our chimney through so that's our plan 
with that and, and because of the pitch you'd you'd have to take almost you'd almost have to take an entire like entire window out in order to do it so that's my solution to that the other thing i was thinking about while i was building this thing it kind of looks like a church doesn't it so i was like uh -huh, it looks like a church and, I, and then i was thinking i wonder if they named the church of latter-day saints because when they were building their church they had so many ladders so we're up near the ridge cap and in order to figure out this uh angle what i've done is i've actually taken a chunk of uh just a chunk of scrap wood and i've made a little point and what it does is it sits on the cap just like that so it's a perfect it's a perfect fit and then what i'm going to do is actually take this to my fabricator and tell him this is exactly what i want there's there's no real guesswork involved it shows exactly the angle the exact distance exact everything and then you can just duplicate it because what i'm going to do is make a hat to sit on top of the ridge in order to cover this opening here and that when we originally did the the opening on the actual roof we, we butted it up right it was actually going to be right tight and then we wouldn't have had to do anything um and then we thought about the fireplace and the chimney coming up through the uh through the roof so that's why we're going to actually put a cap so we, we modified it that's why we left the, the glass down below in order to give us a space up here for the chimney if that all makes sense so take this with me give it to my fabricator he makes a cap easy peasy some of you guys were asking how far the a-frame is from the main cabin well we're at the main cabin right now and i'm going to go to the a-frame i already kind of ran from the a-frame out here just to show you guys so let's go let's let's go let's how's this how's this for a little jog we got the outhouse is going by this isn't the easiest to do so as you can see we're running down the trail running down the trail you should try this at home try running with a camera and then we're here it's not that far away there's dawn anyways that's how far the cabin the a-frame is from the main cabin which is not it's not far it's about like a 20 second run 20 second jog <sighs> hope that answers your question i want to get your input on this and i want i want your opinions and i want your thoughts on what we should do in order to finish the rest of this thing up i've got a couple of ideas rattling around in my head and uh i just want to go through them now so my plan on this uh on this a-frame is to do sort of like a cordwood cookie cutout I've got some of the old pine trees when I was planning on doing is cutting little cookies into uh, about an inch, inch thick, half inch thick, and then sticking them to the front of the thing, maybe, like maybe even around here in order to cover that side. And then what I was going to do is pipe in some mortar, kind of like a cordwood cabin. If you guys have ever seen those, you guys can look those up. Um, it'll kind of like a bit modified cordwood because we're not going to be exactly doing cordwood. It'll be more of a cladding style. And then I want to do a little bit of a bump in here so I can preserve the front of the cabin so if you look at the front of the cabin you can see the structural elements of the a-frame and I like that look I don't know if you guys like that look I think I want to keep that so I actually want to set my interior wall in a little bit further and kind of give that little bit of a, a reveal and then I've got some uh some old windows so I might add some some either diagonal windows I've got a couple circle windows left over so that maybe up in there near the top there maybe I don't know what you guys think. You guys can let me know down in the comments below. And then once I'm inside, what's cool about it is, is the ceiling's done. You don't have to do anything with it. All I've got left is the uh, the knee walls, which are f uh, they're about 40 inches because I got about eight inches of below the structure. And then I've got my back wall here. Um, so I don't exactly know what I'm going to be doing here. I might add a couple more windows. I know I have a fireplace coming from uh, Mini Cubic Stove which is a favorite of mine. It's in the mail. It's being, it's being mailed to me as we speak. So the plan with that is to do kind of a center mount. We've about three feet off the floor. And then what that allows me to do is actually run my chimney up through the panels. And I've got uh, a little cap being made for the top. And that'll allow the chimney to go up and then seal itself through. And then I've got a little bit left. I actually got to clean some windows, but uh, they're not that dirty actually, which is surprising because they've been outside all summer i got these panels sometime in the spring and i've kind of been you know envisioning what i wanted to do with them and i think it's turned out really good and as you guys can see it rained a little bit uh overnight and we don't have that much water in here there is there's a giant crack in the middle of the building 
but uh, it hasn't seemed to be leaking. And I want, I want to be here when it's actually raining to, to see where the water goes. I'm not sure if it just kind of shears off of it or if it leaks out the sides or if there's a drip edge. I don't exactly know how, it, uh, how the water comes out, uh, but I've got a solution for that in case it does rain. I've got some, uh, some pro glaze, they call it, which is a window sealant. And then what I would do is go around each and individual panel to in order to in order to, to ensure it doesn't leak in the future. Because once everything's finished in here, I don't want it to be leaking. Um, the other thing, flooring solutions. I have um, some cherry floor left over from the off-grid uh, shop that I built. I don't know if I have enough of it, but I'm going to certainly try to see. I'm going to measure that and make sure I have enough because I don't, I don't want to start a job and then be like, I don't got enough flooring to finish it but I could mill some stuff. But anyways, that's my plan. I haven't really thought about furniture layout. Um, obviously I need a place to, at least to lay your head and maybe some place to relax, maybe more of an entertaining sort of cabin, uh, just because of the sheer size of it is really cool. So anyways, if you guys got a plan, you know, maybe you can send me a layout, maybe on Instagram, if you guys want to send me a layout, what do you think I should do? Uh, rough, rough dimensions are uh, 12 by nine, nine by 12. And that's my floor space. And uh, as you can see with the knee wall, I can actually get right, right to here. I can get right to the edge, which I'm, I'm kind of, my head's a little bit in the ceiling, but uh, it, it is really, it is really quite spectacular. Well guys, that pretty much wraps it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Bye for now. See you on the next one. Say bye, Don. Bye.